which is whoever is available that I think can be an okay quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo. So when McDaniel shows you what he is, tells you what he is, does all these decisions, believe him. If it quacks like a duck, looks like a duck, it's probably a fucking duck. So, let's compare progression and regression. of the Raiders offense under McDaniels. And we're, we're going to go off paper because we don't have any stats. Okay, guys? On the top is the 2022 offensive roster like on day one of the season, like September 6th or 7th. I know it's hard to read. Forgive me. The graphics ain't the best, but we'll talk through it. Then underneath is the supposed starting roster for this upcoming season. So, I want honesty, guys, in the chat room, whether we're going to compare each positional group and player and see if, in our own minds, if we have progressed or regressed based off of 2022. And I know the season hasn't started, and I get all that. And the roster on the bottom of 2023 might change due to injuries or this or that. I get it. But let's have some damn fun. Let's prove McDaniel's failures right. All right. Let's start with the quarterback position. Last year, we had Derek Carr, Jared Stidham, Chase Gerbers, and maybe Nick Mullins. Okay, Derek Carr is a perennial top 15 quarterback. Let's just be honest. Some people consider him top 10. Some people consider him, experts consider him top 12, 13. But he's at least in the top 15, okay? Now, let's compare it to the new quarterback roster of Jimmy Garoppolo, Brian Hoyer, Aiden O'Connell, and Chase Gerber. Baby formula is still on the team. Let's compare Derek to Jimmy Garoppolo. This will be a controversy no matter who you talk to, who's better, who's worse, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I'm letting you know from my perspective, and I want to know yours in the chat room or in the forum below in the text messaging. Derek Carr is top 15 to me. Jimmy Garoppolo, when healthy, is still top 15. He has more wins throughout his career on a much better team. Derek Carr can make every throw. Derek Carr doesn't have the leg ability. Jimmy Garoppolo has a little bit of the leg ability. But by all honesty, Jimmy Garoppolo, when healthy, is a top 15 quarterback. Derek Carr, no matter what team he has, is a top 15 quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo has more victories. Derek Carr was just proven as an imbecile by Warren Sharp or whoever else, where they posted like 20 or 30 videos of Derek Carr in the red zone and how he made a mistake each and every time. So Raider Nation going crazy. Oh, my God, Derek Carr's the worst. Look at all his decisions in the red zone. Again, how many times has Derek Carr been in the red zone? 300? And they picked 20 or 25 plays or 30 plays that were bad. Again, I don't know the answer, and I'm not saying Derek Carr made mistakes. Yes, Derek Carr needed to improve. I'm not saying he was the best, blah, 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 blah. But Derek Carr is a top 15 quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo is a top 15 quarterback. So there's a shame. But with victories and a better team around him completely, Jimmy Garoppolo is the better quarterback. When healthy. 
So, I have to give this a 50-50. Of course I want to say Derek Carr's a better quarterback because I believe he makes better throws, deep throws, deep balls and everything. But I'm going to say this 50-50, okay? I'm going to give this a 50-50. I don't think we regressed with a healthy Jimmy Garoppolo. But he's not going to be healthy going into the season mentally or physically 100%. So in a way we regressed because we possibly don't have a healthy starting quarterback. But I'm going to give it a 50-50, guys. I'm going to be as honest as I can be. Y'all know that I miss Derek Carr. I like Derek Carr. I'm going to give it a 50-50. Okay? But again, we got controversy with Jimmy Garoppolo going into the season. So that's going to bring it down to if we had Derek Carr on the roster... It would be better. It'd be 51%. Now we got 49% with Jimmy Garoppolo. Because we don't know what's going on. Then for the backup, we had Jared Stidham, who also knew Josh McDaniel's system last year. Okay? That was to back up Derek Carr to have a quarterback that knows the system. Well, what did McDumbutt do when he benched Derek Carr? He gave Jared Stidham a chance, and he told everybody in the med press and the media, we're going to test out Jared Stidham. We want to see what he got moving forward, because I believe in him in this system and on this team. And what do they do three, four weeks later? Eh, go to the Broncos. That's how much belief they had in Jared Stidham. So we did the same thing we did last year. We brought on Brian Hoyer because we got the Garoppolo injury concerns. And Brian Hoyer knows the system, and he's basically like Jared Stidham, a more veteran-esque quarterback that can play decent if he's needed to under Josh McDaniels. So, did we upgrade at the original quarterback spot? No. Did we regress? Maybe. But did we upgrade? No. Did we upgrade at the backup quarterback spot with Brian Hoyer over Jared Stidham? I would say a little. Because Brian Hoyer is a little bit more veteran-esque and has been in the system under Tom Brady for more years than Stidham was. And Brian Hoyer has that much of an edge mentally. So we progressed at the backup quarterback spot. Then we got Aiden O'Connell and Chase Garbers, and I can't compare them to anybody else that was on the roster because they're rookies and whatever. So, in terms of an overall, an overall of the quarterback position, we progressed slightly because of Brian Hoyer compared to Jared Stidham. In terms of knowledge of doing exactly what Josh McDaniels dumb butt wants. So, if last year... We were like, you know, at 60-40 or whatever. This year, we're at 51-49. And that's the most positive you're going to get from me in terms of this quarterback room. <laughs> so we progressed by like 1%. Wow, I can't believe I'm saying that. Now, let's look at the running back room. Josh Jacobs was on the roster last year. Brandon Bolden. Amir Abdullah, Zamir White, and Britton Brown, two rookies that season. Now, let's look at this year. Well, Josh Jacobs ain't under contract, so I can't include him. Shut up. Shut up. Josh Jacobs will be a member of the team, and he'll play. And so did we regress? We did. That's right, Josh Jacobs is a regression from last year, Josh Jacobs. What? Why is that? Well, because now he's under a contract dispute. He's mad at the head coach. They're not offering what he thinks he deserves. He's probably going to be forced to play. He's not going to be happy about it. And they're probably going to run him into the ground even more to where he might not even get more money in the future. So he's going to be a little bit pissed off more. And I'm not saying he won't, but he might not play as hard. So, Josh Jacobs this year, last year he was motivated to get his money. This year, he's getting whatever money they give him. People say, well, he'll be motivated for the next year. Well, they could franchise him again 
in the second year. He doesn't want to get injured. He wants a guaranteed long-term money. He probably wants $30 million somewhere. Guaranteed, fully guaranteed. And he ain't going to get it. He ain't going to get it. So we have regressed with Josh Jacobs at the running back position. Then we got Zamir White. This year is labeled to be the backup to Josh Jacobs as compared to Brandon Bolden last year. And let's be honest, Zamir White looked decent. That, in my opinion, is an upgrade for a rookie uh, second year running back to get some play on an aging Brandon Bolden who didn't look that great last year. When he did play, Zamir White is an upgrade. It is a slight upgrade um, if he is the second in command according to this roster sheet. Then we got the same players again under the Patriot system, Brandon Bolden and Amir Abdullah. So, with the running back room, with, in my opinion, Jacobs regressing, mentally, emotionally, whatever, maybe even physically, not due to himself, but because of all the controversy around all of this stuff and the bad business decisions from my perspective, and Zamir White will progress. We're at 50-50. But with a, a, a Josh Jacobs who's going to regress probably mentally and a little bit physically under this regime, I'm going to have to bring the running back room instead of a 50-50. I think Jacobs is more important to this team than a progressing Zamir White. I think one more year under Jacobs and his power and his strength is more important than a rookie Zamir White. So, we went down to 49, 48% as compared to last year with a good running back roster. So, overall, the running back roster, in my opinion, has regressed. It has regressed slightly. Let me know why I'm wrong or why I'm right. Whatever, I appreciate you guys. Michael F. Like, he's our quarterback. Get behind him. I'm trying. <laughs> trying, brother. You got to appreciate me for trying. Love you, brother. Hoyer is 38. Oh, there you go. There we go. All right, now let's look at the wide receiver room. We had Devontae Adams, Mac Hollins, and Tyron Johnson last year. This year, we got Devontae Adams. Devontae is the same no matter what. He is a little more pitched off this year than last year. Uh, I can't speak for his thing, but he's going to be 100. No matter what we get from Devontae, it's going to be the same. All right? Now, DeAndre Carter, the guy from the Chargers, is he better than Mac Hollins? Sh shorter, quicker. Mac Hollins is more taller. I think we regressed. When Mac Hollins is on his game and he wants to play and not create controversy or get press, he could have been a much better player. DeAndre Carter is what he is. He's a good third down, fourth down receiver. I think we regressed. That's just my opinion. But again, the replacement may be, according to this list, it may be... um. Uh, sorry, what's the other quarterback or the wide receiver we got? Uh, trying to find the name. Forgive me, guys. I can't read too well. Uh, uh, Jacoby. Jacoby Myers. Maybe they consider him the second wide receiver. Again, positions behind, I don't care. Tyron Johnson, he was fast. He was quick. He played great in the preseasons. Now, this year, we got Devontae, DeAndre, Philip Dorchett, Chris Lacey. Last year, we had Hunter Renfro and DJ Turner. This year, we got a Hunter Renfro for now. All, everybody knows the rumors on that. Will he be traded? Are they going to test him out for a few weeks? Are they going to get rid of him? Because they got a lot of slot wide receivers on the roster. Like, compared to last year, we probably had three slot wide receivers under McDaniel's system. Now we got like seven. That just proves that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to throw the ball quickly and they want the ball out of his hands quickly. More so than trying to wait for 
the one wide receiver to get open. So we got Devontae, DeAndre, Philip Dorchette, Chris Lacey. And we also got Hunter Renfro, Trey Tucker, the draft pick, and DJ Turner. All right. Just looking at it, our wide receiver group has progressed. It has progressed. I didn't know who Tyron Johnson was. I didn't know that much about Mac Hollins. Uh, I didn't know much about DJ Turner. But I know more about Jacoby Myers, especially with um, McDaniels. I know a little bit about Keelan Cole, um, Cam Shims with Washington back in the days. And I know about uh, Trey Tucker because he looked like an interesting rookie. I think we have upside with our wide receiver depth, and I think we have progression in the wide receiver department. All right? Now, let's go to the tight end department. Darren Waller, Foster Moreau, Jesper Horstead last year. I thought we had one of the better tight end rooms, younger tight end rooms of, of, of all the teams last year. We all know how that planned out. Now, let's look at this year's. We got... Who's going to be the starter? Who's the stud? We don't really know. We got Austin Hooper, veteran. We got Michael Mayer, draft pick. O.J. Howard, veteran. And Jesper Horsebed back in the system. We don't have a beast or star-studded wide receiver like Darren Waller and an upside wide receiver like Foster Moreau. We do have in Michael Mayer. So, they basically took Darren Waller and replaced him with two aging veterans that can play good at times, but they're not the superstar that Waller was or becoming. Michael Mayer has a lot of upside, probably a little bit more so than Foster Moreau. So, did we progress or regress at the tight end position? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think we regressed. Why? Again, I don't think Austin Hooper or O.J. Howard can be at any moment as good as Darren Waller was in that one season under Gruden and Carr. I think it was 2020. I don't, because we still don't know what we have in Austin Hooper and O.J. Howard. They're probably going to have to mix and match and all that. Maybe they're better blockers than Darren Waller was. Better for the run game. Again, these are these are attributes that we can disting distinguish and separate from each other anytime you want. But Michael Mayer is a very good-looking rookie. And he has better stats than Foster Moreau did coming out of college. And they're calling him the baby Gronk. And we all know if he's anything like a Gronk, that he can do it all, especially under Josh McDaniel's system. So I I look at it, and now that we replace two for one in Darren Waller with Hooper and Howard, I have to call that a regression. But we got the upside of a Michael Myers or Mayer, and I appreciate that. So in my opinion, we regressed. But it's not a bad regression because we're hoping Michael Mayer will take the top spot sometime in the middle of the season once he gets his feet together and then he becomes a bigger star than Darren Waller was in this system or another Gronkowski for this team. That's my opinion. Now, let's just quickly run over the offense. I'm not going to go into too much details like I did with the vaunted position players. But let's go at the left tackle. We got Colton Miller on his final year of his deal. We had Jackson Barton last year at the left tackle spot. Um, this year, we got Colton Miller on his last year. We got Justin Heron, young players, Justin Murray. Uh, did we regress or progress at the left tackle position? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. We stayed the same we have a little bit of upside with the younger players but colton miller's on his final year so we're gonna have to add depth to that position in the draft 
or a free agency or a lot of young players are going to be playing if he gets injured, God forbid. Uh, but I don't see our offensive line at the left tackle position as an upgrade or a downgrade. I don't know what we got. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Now, let's go at the left guard position. We had John Simpson last year, Dylan Parham last year. Now, this year, we got Dylan Parham, who has vaunted into the top spot, even though he played a lot last year, you know. Um, Jordan Meredith and Curtis McClendon. Well, if they had John Simpson as the starter last year and Parham as the backup, and now if we're going into Parham as the starter this year and John Simpson is gone, then we have regressed. We didn't replace him with a better starter, and we're still going to see what Dylan Parham got, and we got young players behind him. So we regressed, in my opinion. But it could be a 50-50. Again, you can go with this a lot of ways. Now let's look at the center position. Last year we tested out Andre James. Okay? This year... We got Andre James, but he's also on a final year of his deal. Then we got Hironisha Grashu this year. And I know there's players that take that position and do it, you know, as a backup. But I'm just speaking about what I see on the board. Have we regressed or progressed? Well, in my opinion, I think we got some interesting centers to back up. I think Alex Barge plays center if he needs to. I think we progressed. At our center department. I think we progressed. I think we progressed. Now, let's look at right guard from last year. We had Lester Cotton Sr., the rookie that was vaunted and highly drafted and is no longer a part of this team. And this year, we got Dylan Parham. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Alex Bars, sorry. Alex Barge. We got Alex Barge, Greg Van Rotten, that's not a good name, and Natane Moody, and Vitali the German. Well, again, much was expected of Lester Cotton Sr. No, that wasn't Lester Cotton Sr., the dr highly vaunted draft pick, was it? No, no. He was the younger player that was drafted many years ago. I'm getting him confused with the other guy that was sent to Chicago. Forgive me. Lester Cotton's been a part of our roster for a good amount of years, and he's working his way up. But he is no longer a part of this team. We got Alex Bars, Grand Veg Rotten. We've upgraded. We've upgraded at the right guard because we got more depth to choose from. More pure positional players. Oh, I was talking about Jermaine Illuminor. No, no, I, I, whatever. Whatever that rookie's name was that went to Chicago, i forgotten. We're done. But I, I think we upgraded at the right guard position because we got a lot of depth. Doesn't mean we're perfect there. It's going to be, like last year, it's going to be a mix and a match. But we got more depth. And we got players that probably the offensive line coach believes in a little bit more than they did last year. So we progressed. Then at right tackle, last year we had Jermaine Illuminor and Thayer Mumford. This year, Jermaine Illuminor, Brandon Parker's coming back. Thayer Mumford is still on the team, and then Dalton Wagner. We have progressed at the right tackle position. So overall on the offensive line, we progressed. I have to be honest and say we progressed. So the offense as a whole, God, I have to be honest and say, even though it hurts me to say it, we have progression as an offense under the guide of Josh McDum Ash. We have progression from my perspective on the entire offense. Albeit we lost some star studded names, we have progressed. That's my opinion, and I'm I don't know if I'm gonna stick to it. We'll revisit this at the end of the season. All right, let, let's just go through the... This was the Raiders' average time of possession in 2022 under Josh McDaniels. The Raiders are what? Seventh on the list? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth on the list. 
They had an average time of possession on offense at 30 minutes and 45 seconds. During the game, there's only 60 minutes in total. The Raiders had the ball more than they didn't have the ball. So that should have produced a winning offense more so. Oh, you got to blame Derek Carr, Mike. It's Derek Carr's fault. Whatever. That's because they ran the ball very, very well. Especially with Josh Jacobs. The offensive line was top 10 at running the ball also because of Josh Jacobs. But in terms of pass protection, the Raiders' offense was ranked like 28th or 29th. So if you add those averages up, the Raiders overall on entire T of offense, the offensive line ranked probably 21, 20. But they held the time of possession more than they did. So they kept the defense off of the field to rest up more than most teams. Now, let's look at the winning teams. The Washington Commanders didn't win that much. The Bengals did, and they had it for 32 minutes. The Packers, the 49ers won a bunch, 31 minutes. The Browns didn't win that much. Pittsburgh didn't win that much. Baltimore Ravens didn't win that much. It's an interesting stat to look at. I don't know what this means, whether to be blame McDaniels, blame the defense, blame Carr, whoever. But you always want to have the ball on offense more so than you want to have or be on the defensive. So this is a good stat for the Raiders, and I hope the Raiders can improve this with more scoring in the future. I would like the Raiders to be, in terms of average time of possession on offense,